Hello, everybody. Why don't we go ahead and stand? Welcome to this Good Friday service in the midst of Passion Week here at the Life Church. We're glad you've taken time right here in the middle of your day to come and observe the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A couple millennia ago, they did some really bad things to a man, the God-man named Jesus Christ. It's bad for him, but good for us. What a sacrifice, amen? I wonder if we could just lift our hands all across this place and let's just welcome the presence of the Lord. You are welcome here. We desire to commune with you, to meet with you today. God, we come in a posture of humility. We come in a posture of reverence, recognizing, Lord, your great love that was put on display for us 2,000 years ago. Lord, you marched to the cross, despising the shame, Lord. God, but you did it for the hope that was set before you, and we are grateful today that we have been written into your story Lord, that you count us worthy today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for laying your life down, for being willing to die. While we were yet sinners, you demonstrated your love for us, and we are grateful for that. We give you honor. We give you glory. And we give you praise. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to enter into a time of worship, but I do want to welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. We're grateful to have Dr. James Littles here with us. He's going to be ministering in just a, a few moments. We'll close today's service out with communion. Uh, but I wonder if we could just go ahead and get our minds focused on the Lord Jesus and let's worship him together. There's a place. There's a place.
worship and magnify your name even now. We are in awe of your presence, O Lord. We receive the invitation to be your sons and daughters this day. We worship and magnify you above all else. We join with all creation to magnify your name. The heavens declare your glory and so do we. Trees of the field declare your glory and so do we. The beast of the field breathe because you live and so do we. The fish of the sea, O oh Lord, glorify you and so do we. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. What an honor it is to be here at the Life Church on this Good Friday to be able to share some time together as we think about the amazing gift that He has given to us. So as we turn to John chapter number one. beginning of Jesus' ministry, this declaration that he is the Lamb of God came from John the Baptist, his forerunner. So as this day we think about what he did, but it's not something that's rooted as an artifact in the past, like the American Constitution. You can see the document if you go to D.C. behind plate glass, some kind of gas around it so that the paper doesn't decay. But it's an artifact of yesterday. I'm here to declare today that the power of the cross is real and alive right here, right now. The cross is, was the day changer then, and the cross is a day changer now. The cross broke the power of sin. The cross breaks the power of sin. We thank you, O Lord. We thank you, O Lord. Amen. First, excuse me, John chapter number one, we'll read verse 29 to 31 and then drop down a few verses. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he is before me did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water. Verse number 35, again, the next day John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. They followed Jesus and Jesus turned around and seeing them following, said to them, what do you seek? What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, when translated teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. And they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. It was about the 10th hour. Lord, this, eve, this afternoon we also seek you. This afternoon we follow you. This day we are intent of knowing where you are. You came to be where we are so that we can join where you are. Help us to be open to the power of the cross on this Good Friday in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You may be seated marketing and the entertainment world, they have to do something to constantly keep our attention. That's very hard to do in a media-saturated world, in a world that is constantly bombarding us with ideas and images on a regular basis. It's called becoming habituated. It's when the place where situations become so familiar to you, you don't see it anymore. You can See this as you hold a child. If you, if you make faces at a child, a little infant, and you make goo-goo sounds, they will laugh and giggle until they get tired of it, and then they look away. They call that habituated. They got used to your goo-goo, and now it's not so interesting anymore. 
Our world is trying to keep our attention, to sell you a product, to motivate you to have an emotion in a certain direction and a certain appeal. On this Good Friday, we are here to say yes to God's effort to get our attention. Got a question for you. Does God have your attention this afternoon? Or have you been so familiar with the idea that he's alive and real that it's <sighs> Have you read his word so much that <sighs> you sung songs of Zion that it no longer means anything anymore and somebody has to do somersaults in church to get your attention? Got to have a new song to get your attention. Got to have some new experience to get your attention. I am so thankful today that the cross has our attention. He doesn't have to do anything else to get our attention. He already says, I love you and I give my life for you, that everything can be transformed and turned upside down. John Baptist, with his followers, saw Jesus approaching, and John declared, this is the Lamb of God. This is is the Lamb of God. The Lamb was needed because sin demanded an answer. When I read the newspaper, look at the news feed on my phone, I am constantly made aware that our, sin, our world is broken. Our nation is broken. Our city is broken. Our world is broken. And on every side, there is a need for the Lamb of God who was slain from the foundation of the world that you and I can be set free. But not just those of us that are gathered here, but when you go back to work on Monday, they too can be set free. When you go to university next week, every professor in university can be set free and every student can be set free. You're a prison guard and you go on your next shift to stand guard in the prison. Every one that's behind the bars can be set free because there's an answer to the sin question. His name is Jesus. Without the cross, we are in slavery to sin. A price had to be prayed. Redemption had to be known. God is always seeking a relationship with us. This is a a real a reality that regardless of someone's belief in God, God is in relationship with them. Every atheist in town says there is no God, but God is in relationship to them. If you see, every breath they breathe came from God. Every time it rains, Scripture tells us it rains on the just and on the unjust, bringing forth those flowers of which we are astounded, those blue bonnets, bluebells, whichever it is. I'm a Yankee, so I can never remember which is the ice cream and which is the flower, okay? I like them both. I wish we could get both all, see, all year <laughs> instead of just the one. When we look at the flower and we say, how beautiful, you don't have to know it, but there's a creator that put that flower in the ground for you and for me. You can deny his existence, but he will never deny your existence. You can say he doesn't live, but he does live for you. Every breath you breathe, every time it rains, every single good gift that you have received, that comes from above, the Father of lights in whom there is no shadow or variableness of turning. In the Old Testament, there were sacrifices. The reason for the lamb being sacrificed, perhaps the Paschal lamb of the Passover, taking people from Egypt and destining them for the promised land, that was given so that the death angel would pass by and liberate them in a way from Egypt. And later on, as the law was given and as the commandments were poured out on Mount Sinai, he said, I want you to build me a tabernacle. Why? I want a tabernacle so that I can live next door to you. Don't know who lives next door to you. Matter of fact, I found out when I moved to the Dallas area, most of our neighbors don't want to know who lives next door to them. 
I thought when I was in Africa several years ago and saw stockade fencing around every house, I thought, so tragic that everybody needs to feel protected. And then I moved to Dallas and found out that's... We want to drive into the back of our garage and we want a stockade fence around us. We want to hide our identity from one another. But God said to Israel, I want to move next door to you. So let's build a house. And let there be sacrifices so that the place can be clean and pure and holy so that my living next door to you doesn't destroy you. I don't know about you, but I have never had an inquisitive spirit when I see that tall chain link fence with concertina wire around the top and there's this red sign that says danger, high voltage. I have never been tempted to test it out. Wondering what would happen if I climbed that fence? What would happen if I grabbed one of those wires? I, I really don't need to know. God created a way so that we could live close to him and not get zapped. He is so holy and so pure and so true that unless there was a sacrifice, when God came down to Israel, it would destroy all of them in just a moment. That's why the sacrificial system was necessary. There had to be a lamb. Blood had to be shed. Sin had to have an answer so that God could come and rehab a people to teach them how to think and teach them how to talk and teach them how to serve and teach them how to forgive. And you and I know that that now is possible because the perfect lamb has come. Behold Jesus, the very lamb of God. We'll celebrate the Lord's Supper here in just a few moments, communion together. This sacrifice that was done years ago was the perfect lamb which takes away the sin of the world. That perfect, perfect lamb requires a people that are prepared for him. G, uh, John Baptist said about Jesus, this is the lamb of God come to take away the sins of the world and that's why I baptize people, John said. I need you to get ready for Jesus. When I travel these days on the airplane, I wonder if people look like that on the airplane, what do they look like in their house? They fly in PJs. What's it look like in their house? You knew for sure that a dignitary was coming to your home. Your home would be cleaned and swept and you'd get out of your PJs, I hope. Get into something else. John Baptist says, since this is the lamb, we've got to get ready for what God wants to do. Since this is the lamb of God, it's time for us to prepare for his purposes and his design. And they were being baptized. And the next day, Scripture says, Jesus came to John's meeting again, and John said it a second time, this is the Lamb of God. And when he said that, the disciples turned from John and started following Jesus. And Jesus just kind of walked on like he had some kind of spectrum thing, you know, that he was doing his own piece. He walked perhaps a hundred yards away and then turned around because there was a couple of guys following him. And here was the question, what are you looking for? That's the question I have for you here this afternoon. If you're following Jesus, what are you seeking? What are you looking for on this Good Friday? Two things I think we need on this Good Friday. And the first one, you and I need a little bit of curiosity. Their curiosity is, Jesus, where are you sleeping tonight? What kind of mattress you got? You got a purple one? You got box springs under it? Do you use a twin size, king size, California king? What size of bed you got? And what, what kind of thread count are your sheets? We want to see where you're hanging out tonight and Here's the amazing thing about the Lamb of God. If that's all the curiosity you have, the Lamb says, come and see. 
Even if that's the only dimension of curiosity you have on this Good Friday, I want to know where God is. God says, come and see. I'm wondering, is there anyone in the house this afternoon that is curious for healing? Come and see. Anyone in the house curious today? Does he, is he still the Prince of Peace? Come and see. Anyone say that he says he still pour out his spirit on all flesh? Come and see. Does he still get spiritual gifts in this hour? Come and see. Our fruit of the Spirit still available today. Mercy and peace and gentleness and long suffering. Come and see. Oh, on this Good Friday, would you get just a little bit curious? There's something about Jesus that you don't know yet. And someone say, may say, well, Jim, that's a little bit bold. You don't know me. How, how do you know I, there's more to Jesus to know? I just know that he's the Lamb of God. And no matter what you know about him, there's some more to know on this Good Friday. Just come and see. When we take of the Lord's Supper here in just a little bit, we're just going to come and see, Lord, what is it that you want to do? Come and see. Even if that come and see is just, I want to know if Jesus is really here. And I declare along with everyone else here at Life Church today that Jesus is in the house. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2, verse 12 and following, there's a discussion of the impact of that Good Friday, the impact of the Lamb of God that was slain. Because you see, when he died, the earth tremored. You think, you think that tornadoes that are on the earth right now, you think earthquakes now happen because of climate change. On that day, the veil was ripped from top to bottom. On that day, the sun went dark, not just for a subtle eclipse, but for about three hours. It was dark on the face of the earth. Why? Because they knew that there was an impact when the Lamb of God was slain. Colossians chapter 2, verse uh, 12 and following. We are buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith of the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, forgiven you all trespasses having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements, that is, the, the judgment that's against you, the, uh, the indictment against you, takes all of those indictments that were against us, contrary to us. He has taken it out of the way. <laughs> he took all of my shame and it was nailed on the cross. Nailed on the cross. Nailed on the cross, when you think on this Good Friday of Jesus hanging there, what hung him there was really my shame and your shame. Nailed to the cross, he disarmed principalities and powers and he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. As we think about the cup of his blood and as we think about the bread of his body that was broken for us, and we realize that on that day he received the bread, blessed the bread, broke the bread, and shared the bread. His body was broken for you and for me. In this room right now, even in our silence and anticipation of what God wants to do, uh, corners of our spirit that need something removed and nailed to the cross. I'm asking you, will you confess that Jesus is the Lamb of God? And when you do so, would you let him take away the darkness that's in your spirit, the shame that's from your yesterday, your fear of tomorrow. Every fear of tomorrow needs to be 
nailed to the cross right here and right now. The bread is the bread of remembrance. We see in the, the three uh, synoptic gospels, the bread of remembrance. Jesus, we bring him into today, transforming us now as we look to tomorrow. And the cup, the cup is the blood of the new covenant, enabling us to do what we can only do through him. Paul tells us in Colossians here that our personal shame was nailed to the cross. In the Old Testament, you can read the story one time of some people who wanted to usurp spiritual authority and flames came out of their censers and they all died. And God gave the command to Moses, pick up all of those censers out of the ashes and beat them flat and nail them to the altar. From that day forward, every time that brazen altar was picked up and moved, there was the slight clattering of those 300, those 300 beaten plates, a reminder of the shame from yesterday that was there. Every time the priest would take the life of another lamb and throw it up on top of that altar, he would have to bang a knee into one of those plates as a remain, reminder of what was taken care of yesterday. I'm here to let you know that all of your shame from yesterday, it is dangling from the cross. It is finished. It is no more. It has no power over you. You see the power of the cross because he's the very lamb of God. He disarmed principalities and powers. Our world is filled with evil forces and darkness on every side. But because he's the lamb of God, when he went to the cross, the power of darkness was shattered around us. This is why on this Good Friday, we as the church are a little bit curious. How are you going to use the life church at this time and in this season? Because we will not walk in fear and we will not walk in bondage and we will not look at our world and say there is no hope. There is hope because my Redeemer died and now my Redeemer lives forever. The powers around us have been broken. Every time I travel through a major metropolitan area and see beggars on the street and homeless people pushing the basket, every time I read a newspaper and see another shooting in a school or a, a threat of a shooting in a workplace, I'm reminded that i got to look to the cross one more time. Otherwise, I will forget that the power of sin has already lost its grip on humanity because God so loved the world, he would not let the the world suffer under that grip forever. But he gave his only begotten son because it's not his will that any should perish. And right now, the power of sin is broken. If there are some things in your marriage that's threatening to drive your marriage apart, I'm asking you this day, consider Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Because that thing which is harming your marriages doesn't have to control. If you'll just step up to the cross and, and take out something and just nail the shame there. We can't figure out how to get along with that misunderstanding. We're going to nail it to the cross right now. I sinned against her or sinned against him. Well, that sin from yesterday, we're going to nail it on the cross. Maybe your life has been co-opted by drugs or alcohol. I need you to know that that is only a short-time fix, but there's a permanent fix that comes through Jesus Christ. But you've got to be willing to say, Behold, the Lamb of God, and I want to see where Jesus is going. I want to see what he has in plan for my tomorrow. So I'm going to follow Jesus this Good Friday. Paul, writing to the Colossian church, reminds them that they've been buried with Christ in baptism so they can live with him. On Good Friday, we commemorate his death. On Sunday, we will commemorate his resurrection. But you see, this is not a story from yesterday. I enjoy reading history books. I like seeing how people lived in the past. I'm one of those people who go through museums that irritates my wife to death because I want to read every 
plaque. The guards watch over me because if they don't, I'm not going to steal anything, but I'm going to touch everything. <laughs> Get your hands off of it. Okay, I'll leave them in my pocket. A little bit curious about yesterday, but the cross is not a curiosity from yesterday. It's a reality today. Are you following Jesus, the Lamb of God? I'd like to see the hands of those that have already been baptized in the name of Jesus. Could I see those hands right now? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've already taken us by way of the cross and we have been buried with you in baptism and we remember that baptism right now in Jesus' precious name. Those of you that have already been filled with the Holy Spirit, would you raise your hand? You've been resurrected to new life. Your life is not the way it was yesterday. Your life is not like it is in the world. You've been resurrected to brand new life and Jesus is still the Lamb of God. We're alive in the Spirit. So this morning as we prepare to take of the Lord's Supper, we prepare to take of communion, I want to ask you, do you say yes to Jesus' curiosity? Will you say yes to Jesus' curiosity? As we take of the cup, we take of the bread, sip of the cup and eat of the bread, will you say yes, Lord, I'm going to stay curious I'm going to stay curious about what you want in the tomorrows of my life. I'm wondering, will you say yes to the removal of all sin, shame? You've already been baptized in water and spirit, and there's no reason that shame has any hold on you anymore. So this Good Friday is a day to remember. And that cross didn't just hold Jesus. It held all of my shame, held all of my iniquity. It held all of my brokenness. Yes to curiosity. Yes to removal of sin, shame. Do you say yes to life that brings honor, receives honor from Jesus? For you see, it's not enough to have your shame removed. It's not enough to have sin stain rubbed out. It's got to be replaced with something far superior. Shame gone. Jesus honor placed on you. Brokenness removed. Healing is in its place. There's a healer in the house right now and it's Jesus Christ, the very Lamb of God. Somebody is here this morning to say, I need God's honor on me. And if you'll be curious in Jesus, if you'll let sin, shame be removed and you'll receive honor from him, then you need the power of the Lamb of God to do all of this. You see, he has a purpose for Life Church tomorrow and Sunday and next week. He has a purpose for you individually and for your family. He has a purpose for your ministry team. Your life has a reason because he's the Lamb of God. If we say yes to curiosity and yes to removal of sins, sins shame, and say yes to receiving honor from Jesus, we can't pull this off on our own. You see, I can, I can say yes to a diet, but unless the princess is there making it happen, I will relapse with the first cheeseburger I smell. But if she and I pledge together, we can support one another. And we are both, both a earthen vessels. But when we say yes to Jesus and partake of the bread and the cup, we say, Lord, I want to stay curious. And Jesus says, I'm going to keep you that way. We say, yes, I want my shame removed. But when we take of the cup and the bread, Jesus says, I'm going to keep it off of you. And I am the Lamb of God and I can do it. And when we say, yes, I need the honor of an almighty God so I can do his will and his purposes, he says, I've given you my blood and my body I will make it happen, that which you have pledged to do. Let's stand together, shall we? Lord Jesus, right here, we give ourselves to you afresh. We receive of your goodness and your mercies afresh. Right now, I am curious about what you want to do in my life. I surrender my every tomorrow to you. I want to follow you this Good Friday. 
Curious, oh Lord, where are you? What are you doing in the world today? Transform my life with your purposes and your design in Jesus' name. was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. But sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But for the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I at home. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus. You have saved my life. Brought me from the darkness into inside of my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, but then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting, and life has no end. For I have been transformed by the blood of the Lamb. So thank
blood. Come on, let's give glory to him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're getting ready to receive communion. There are serving stations here in the front. They're also in the back of the aisleways. And if you plan to participate today, I uh, would love to go ahead and invite you to come forward and serve your yourself. Um, take a, a, a cup of juice and a piece of bread. As many as are willing to move forward, as many as willing to come to the front, we'd love to have you here in the front. If you're not able to or just prefer to stay in the back, that is fine. We're leaving your participation in communion today up to you. This doesn't mean that you're necessarily a part of this church. This is between you and the Lord. If there are children here today, moms and dads, we're asking that you would be active and involved. And you make that determination of whether your child Participates, And if they do, I would love it to be right there with you and you walking them through this and them understanding the seriousness and significance of what we're doing today. Feel free to just stay in the altar area after you've served yourself. Just step to the side so others can come into the table, but stay close if you're, if you're willing. Thank you, Dr. Littles, for that tremendous message. Thankful that Jesus is the lamb, that we know he's that sacrificial lamb. He took your place. He took my place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Scripture says to prepare your heart to examine your heart, to think about if there's anything that could possibly be separating you between you and the Lord. And I'm going to invite us to do that before we partake. I want, you, I want you to know, I want you to understand that communion is not about judgment. It's about grace. When we partake of the body represented by the bread and the blood represented by the juice. We are partaking of the grace of God. What a blessing. What a privilege that we're able to identify in this way. But we don't need to do it casually. So we want to take just a moment and let's examine our hearts and let's repent before the Lord. Could you just talk to God right now and come on, maybe there's something you need to nail to the cross. Would you do that? Something you need to give to him, something you need to release to him, something that you need to repent over. Take just a moment. Oh, God, let your blood flow to us today. Lord, we ask for you to cleanse, create in us a clean heart, renew in us a right spirit. Lord, we, we, we repent today over living for our selfish motives and ambitions. God, we repent for living according to, to flesh and our fleshly ways. Take our sin and separate it today as far as the east is from the west. Let our sin be plunged beneath the blood today. Though our sins be as scarlet, Lord, we believe that you can wash them as white as snow. Oh, have mercy on us a sinner today. Have mercy on us. We need your goodness. We need your grace. Lord, we ask that you wouldn't 
account our iniquity to our charge, but you had credited us with your righteousness. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Before we take another step forward, could we just have a, a moment of remembrance? Maybe even a moment of silence. And, and let's survey the cross in our mind. Let's survey the work Jesus accomplished for us on the, on the cross in our minds. Is anybody grateful today? Hallelujah. Why don't we just lift our voice, lift our hands if you're able to. God, we thank you. Thank you for being that lamb. Slain once and for all for the sins of the world. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for the blood flow. Oh, Lord. Thank you for your mercy on display, for your grace. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that that, that veil, that curtain was torn in two. When you breathed your last, Lord, and we can now come boldly to your throne room. We can find grace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you have the bread, would you take it and just lift it right now? On the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. And as often as you eat this bread, do it in remembrance of me. Can we receive the boat broken body of our Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Let's thank him for that. He was beaten. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Oh, thank you, Lord, for suffering on our behalf. Thank you for the torture and the agony that you endured. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your broken body. Thank you for allowing us to partake today, to commune with you in this way. Thank you, Jesus. If you'll do the same with the cup, let's lift it. Then he took the cup and said, this is the blood of my new covenant. This is the blood that was shed for you. As often as you take this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's receive of the cup. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Go ahead and let your praise begin to flow and your worship be directed heavenward right now. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for that crimson stream of blood that flows from Calvary that continues to flow today, that flows to right where we are. 
Oh, I thank you, Lord. I honor you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, that's it. Let worship and praise fill your heart. Let your gratitude overflow right now. Let your love for him be expressed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's receptacles on the table if you want to lay your cup aside. But let's worship the Lord right now. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Hallelujah. My Jesus said At the wounds that give me light, grace flowing from his side, no greater sacrifice. What he's done, what he's done, all the glory and the honor to the Son. My sins are forgiven, my future is heaven.
what he's done I'll never forget 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 Thank you for worshiping with us on this Good Friday. I know some have got to hurry back to work. I'm asking for my wife right down here in front, Brother Miller. Pastor Matt, would you come over? If you have need today, if there's something we can pray with you for, pray with you about, feel free to, as we get ready to dismiss, to just come forward and one of these leaders and ministers will pray with you today and believe with you today. So thankful that you chose to be with us. We look forward to seeing many of you this Sunday, 930 or 1130 uh, in our, our worship times on Sunday. God bless you. Have a wonderful remainder of your day. Go in God and go in remembrance that he is, Jesus is the lamb. Praise